So hi everyone and welcome um, to this round table. We, uh, so let me, we, we're starting a little bit like that. Generally we are, we should be ready, but we're never ready. So <laughs> let's go as it comes. So um, I'm here with uh, Isabel and we will be joined uh, by Kimberly in a few minutes. So we're starting the two of us and then we'll be three very soon. So uh, I let uh, Isabel already um, introduce herself. <laughs> Hi everyone. Again, I'm Isabel Zimmerman. I am so delighted that you are spending some time with us and we have a great topic that Max chose around how the, our reality is actually perfect. It's a deep one. I think we're gonna share some really exciting perspectives and hopefully something will spark within you. Because again, it doesn't matter what Max and I and Kimberly believe, it matters what you believe because that is part of your vibration. And a lot of you out there, my fellow light workers and my newly awakened humans out there, you are feeling intense pressure lately. You are getting frustrated or possibly not sleeping. There are a variety of things that are going on because the ascension is accelerating. It is getting stronger and more powerful. And so all those limiting beliefs within you has to be addressed. This is part of the phase and stage of ascension. And we are here to assist your greater understanding, your, um, because if you're not aware of something, then What's the point, right? The first step is being aware. Again, I'm Isabel Zimmerman. You can find me on Attracting Wisdom. Just Google it and that's it. All right, Max? Yes, so um, as you know, uh, I'm Max, uh, Break of, with Max. Uh, and uh, yes, so, um, I was inspired by a um, by realizing one thing, right? Uh, um, or, or many things, actually, <laughs> not just one. There are many things, so many ideas, many things coming in. But um, there is one side that is uh, the externalization versus the internalization, or the internalization versus the externalization of reality. Meaning that we come with uh, uh, this idea that um, we grew up, we grow up with the idea of, of reality being external, right? We have a physical reality that is absolutely real, external to us, and, um, and that's it. That's yes. all we need to know about reality, right? That's right. So out. that belief, right, Max? That belief is I feel this way because something outside of me caused me to feel this way. Or yes. it is someone else's fault that I feel this way. They made me feel this way. Exactly. Right? So, so if you have if you believe that, if you have these ideas that it's outside of you, which is what we've been taught, we're yes. going to tell you it's not. I know, shocking. Now, some of you guys might already know this, but we're going to deep dive into it. All right, Max, go ahead. Finish your... Yeah, yes. And, and, and right, it's, it's that external. And, uh, and now we are... Uh, we are letting of that learning because all uh, uh, you have to see this realize this all that you are expressing in your daily life as a human is not what you know it's what you have been told right you, you so wait 
So you're saying in my human experience. Oh, okay. Got it. Right. You're saying, I think, I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. You're saying your beliefs, most of them have been told to you. Yes. Most of us have not been penniless, poor, starving on the street. We might have known someone or our grandparents or a friend or read a story, but we don't personally experience it, but we've adopted that fear. Exactly. Yes, because you, you do, these things do not know from the knowing. So the fact that I discover it or I understand it or I uh, experience it, I receive that from what? Well, generation from uh, from one generation to the other one or the new one right uh, uh, at school and all of this and we take that for granted that right we, we go into it saying oh they said me this so that must be true that that becomes my truth right so we and 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 that's uh, to say we are externalizing reality, but that's that's the way we want it to be because that's the way we learn it, right? Okay, so adopted beliefs, right? Yes. So here's a common one. Um, if you put your hand on a hot stove, you'll get burned. Well, that belief, right? Putting your hand on a hot stove. I'm not asking you to put your hand on a hot stove, but... <laughs> But, but you can you, try <laughs> right but so when somebody tells you that you're going to make an assumption that all beliefs are true because we're we're in cause and effect but really in higher truth not everyone who touches a stove gets burned most of us do but i'm telling you there will always be exceptions always do you know why out there because all possibilities must exist and exactly. that is that's the higher truth that is the truth so we adopt beliefs because we uncovered we just started to trust them yes and we have kimberly and summer joining us uh so well uh guys please do not hesitate to well join the conversation obviously you are here for that um and uh, um let's let's get right let's get into it just i think that would be nice if you just could have just a quick introduction for everyone and then we keep going with the conversation hello <laughs> hi <laughs> hi that's about the quickest introduction i can give <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, hello everybody, Kimberly. Um, I'm just tuning in from Sydney, just got my coffee here. And um, yeah, nice to be here. As you might know, I am a channel, I am a counsellor, I'm a spiritual surgeon teacher, light language alchemist, and yeah, happy to be here to chat with my friends all about the perfect perfection of the universe. My name is Summer. And I am that part of you that is starting to speak to you about things that you are now awakening to. So that's my part in all of this. <laughs> all right. So let's. Uh, um, so we were saying uh, talking about uh, uh, this reality, and uh, we were starting with uh, the realization of. Uh, most of what we receive as a, a teaching, as a learning from our um, infancy is about what we have been told and not what we have experienced. It's not from our knowing, it's from coming from the outside, right? So we are talking about uh, the uh, reality, uh, so the externalization of, re uh, of reality versus the inter in, uh, internal reality. Um, and we were saying, right, right uh, about this realization of uh, the accepting the external, whether it's what we are told 
from, from our parents, our teachers, that are repeating what they heard from their parents and their teachers, right? So it's, it's generation after generation that we are repeating this, 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 uh, this, uh, these things, right? And they stay for a very, let's say, long time with, with, with us. And, um, and then we come to, we have come to the realization, right, of the internal reality. We have discovered ourselves as something else than the victim or the perpetrator or, or uh, the one that is just navigating reality at sight, trying to survive from one day to the other and not to get crushed by emotions or by events or experiences that are uh, whatever they are, right? We are, we are coming to that somehow. Every one of us, we have taken that path. And when we start realizing the inside, then we discover ourselves in billions of new ways with, with new discoveries of, of our abilities, of, of our right, of ourselves. And, and suddenly reality changes. And then we realize it's not just reality the change, is that our internal change is then transmitted to our daily reality. What we experience every day, then wow, suddenly, and th this, this, right, it's not a, uh, <laughs> it's not a promise or it's really like that. Everything yeah. changes, right? Max, can you give us an example of something you change internally that was reflected back in your outside reality. Oh, uh, my relationship with, well, first with myself, right? My worth, my, the understanding of, of, of myself as a deserving being, uh, the realization that uh, I am not useless or that I am not uh, a victim. Right when when you start entering into that, that just that worth, that well, you didn't know you 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 have right. It's built in. You are that, but you, we we come from yeah from 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 unworthiness. But it's always something that we believe. But it right. We express it in a certain way, and then you change that and you become your worth. And suddenly your relationship with everything changes completely. Um, my unworthiness uh, was expressed in my relationship with my parents, with, with, especially with my parents and um, with my sister. I didn't have a relationship with my sister for 20 years. Uh, we just, uh, uh, when we were in the same room, I was just watching her and, and just ignoring her, right? Because I was, I was, and this is, <laughs> this has happened really recently. And I, uh, I, I was seeing her in that way I, and I was, seeing her as the one that tried to destroy me. And then with my re self re realization, I, I realized, well, that's not true, right? She was, she didn't, she never tried that. And so after 20 years, we spoke and, and suddenly, right, the person that I am exchanging with, I don't know that girl. Right, I don't know her because I never experienced that person in that way. But this is the thing: is that this is possible? Why not? Because she changed. She didn't have to change. Why should she change? Right, that person doesn't have to change. Mm -hmm. She changes because I change in, in, inside of me. Right, so that my reality at that moment becomes something completely new and unexpected. I agree. The same thing happened to me multiple, multiple times. Um, one of the things that I had to change in me was the belief that anger was not wrong. And so in my physical reality, I had an angry husband and an angry daughter. 
and an angry mother because I wouldn't allow myself to express my own anger. And I had viewed it as wrong. And so I had softened it. I changed it because it was a deep belief. It wasn't like, oh, today I'm going to believe that anger is right. Yay, done. No, you have to feel it and you cannot trick the universe. The universe works on frequency and vibration. So it doesn't matter what my mind thinks. It doesn't matter what I say. It matters what I believe in my heart. I have to understand, do I really feel that way? And so that's why it took so long. And when I change that anger is acceptable and that it's right, my relationships, they didn't have to show up angry and mad. And even if they did show up angry and mad, I was no longer judging them as wrong, expressing their anger. So we just went through it really fast because I didn't, you know, it was, it was still, it was fine. And so that's what we're, we're talking about. Kimberly or Summer, do you have an example when you changed a belief within you and what was reflected outside had changed? Um, yeah, I'll jump in. Ah, well, there's been numerous occasions, but I guess the most pivotal moment for me, well, I wouldn't say it wasn't one moment, but coming from the victimization paradigm to knowing that there are no such thing as victims in my own healing journey. Um, I think this realization for me is one thing was one thing to kind of conceptually understand it, but it was another thing to embody it. And, you know, and of course, it's part of the human paradigm. You know, sometimes it's, it's common and it's, you know, very easy for us to fall into that victimization paradigm you know, that someone's doing something to me or something is doing something to me. Um, the conditions are doing something to me um, because we have been conditioned, just what Max was saying. We have been conditioned. It becomes um, a drug. It is. And we become addicted to that drama, that victimization paradigm. And, you know, and it's, you know, because we're attached to duality consciousness, because we perceive separation, right? And what happens when we're in that, and I'll go into my examples, but the, um, the victimization paradigm, what happens is that our own energy field, you know, we, our energy field goes more into matter, right? So we feel even less separated. So the more we dwell on fear, separation, and duality, that, that unified field, our own energy, it, basically reverses right and become more matter so when we can see that you know victimization that's just an illusion like who we truly are is oneness and everyone is playing a role here for our evolution and when you can start to practice not just embody but really practice and, and, and cultivate the feelings of acceptance and really body the feelings of love you expand your field and then you move more of your oneness you know, one self, and it actually heals the body as well. So in my case, I guess the most pivotal thing in my reality, in my journey was coming from trauma, perceived trauma, felt trauma, embodied trauma, um, you know, in the whole biology, psychology, like I was completely dissociated. And I basically had to yeah, go within. And the way I healed myself was just to, yeah, one step at a time, one belief at a time, I, I you know, had to just practice self-love. And when I got to the level of self-love within me, started to see myself as worthy, whole and complete, I was able to then extend that outwardly. And I was able to see, you know, her, uh, uh, in my life, I went through a specific trauma episode uh, well, and a, a series of events, and I was able to, you know, be able to then really see and believe that there was no perpetrator and that there are soul contracts involved and, you know, and that I was able to see silver linings on things. And, you know, as a human, it's really hard to see silver linings sometimes when we go through trauma because we really, you know, we can really feel the pain and the suffering and we, we sense that it's very real for us. But, you know, over time, you can get to the point where you can see silver linings. 
and you can discover your power from it. So in my case, what I went through, I was able to then yeah, see the higher perspective, know that people were just playing a role with me. And, and um, yeah, I got to the point where I got empowered from it. And it actually, yeah, it basically allowed me to remember my path here. And it actually inspired me to become a counsellor. And then as a counsellor, it inspired me to then um, go even deeper again and discover I could channel. And here I am today. I have so, a question for you. Yeah. How, how did you manage the emotions that that path was bringing to you? in 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 uh, going to um seeing yourself in that way but the emotion that were still there in the regards of those people that were they were playing a role right but you still must have must have had emotions linked to that oh, yeah. experiences <laughs> those experiences well, yeah, or well, definitely the emotions were for myself um, that I was not worthy and that I deserved to be treated not well, you know, and it was beliefs, you know, that I had for myself. And I didn't realize at the time, I thought I had a selfie, you know, sense of self-worth and self-love. That's what I thought, but obviously not. And just the way the event paid out played out um and it, at the time in the third dimensional reality you can perceive it as um you know the, the whole psychology around it it really made me believe that I you know that I deserved it basically and um and yeah so because I thought I deserved it at the time I went deep into victimization and then yeah it was really just having to when when everything had finished and I was on the healing path I was completely dissociated I was numbed from reality but it was a good thing in a way because I got to start over so I literally had to go within build myself self-love had to remind myself that I was love yeah it was just as many steps small steps one at a time it doesn't happen overnight it depends what you're going through I mean you know with practice you can in the moment you know transform yourself but depending obviously what it is and it's just I had to remind myself that I was love I had to go and reconnect with people know that I was safe to reconnect with people and and it was just, I had, to, I had to embody love and I had to trust myself, trust others. And um, I, yeah, and then for me, I... Yeah, wait, I wait, wait. So this. Kimberly, when yes. you said you had to trust others and love yourself, how did you know that's what you needed to do? Was it something you read? Was it something you told? Was it something you felt? So you went through, so Kimberly went through a very traumatic experience just so you guys know and um but how did you know that you had to love yourself through that what made you think oh I have to love myself yeah well luckily I had some help there because I was so dissociated I was completely numbed out um, I mean I had a little background because at the time I was I had already trained up in Reiki so I was healing myself through Reiki connecting with my heart chakra reconnecting myself, embodying myself back into reality and into love that way. I also went on a deep dive to law of attraction. Uh, I found Louise L. Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. I don't know, a lot of people you know about that book. There was a there was a movie as well on the subject, a documentary. So I went on a deep dive, law of attraction. This was several years ago. Do you know, just, it, was, I don't know it was quite some time ago, actually. And um, I just really, you know, found law of attraction. Actually, that's probably when I really got into law of attraction from this. And um, just hearing stories of people who could heal themselves. And I knew it was all about psychology as well and self-love and vibration. And, and yeah, there was so many steps. But um, trusting people, trusting myself, I went into, I actually got into, then I got into Latin dancing, actually. When I, I moved into state and that embodiment of trust, because it was a physical, also physical trauma as well. So the action of me engaging with connection, intimate connection with dancing, that allowed me to allow myself to be vulnerable in that space to connect with another person. Because when you dance with someone, you, you kind of... Um, yeah, you kind of feel into their space, their energy, and you kind of move as one when you dance. So it's that trust, being vulnerable, 
And that was part of my healing journey, not for everybody, but that was part of my healing journey. And um, just, yeah, I just had to, and luckily for me, well, part of my journey already had some kind of intuitive psychic ability. So I could see there were higher perspectives involved. And I just had to remind myself of the higher picture and I fell a victimization. And of course, the body holds trauma, right? So I had to kind of really go in and transmute that fear and that trauma. It's taking a number of years, guys. It doesn't happen overnight. Yes, I got to one point, then another point, then another point, then another point. So it is a journey. But I know I got to a point where I could look back and thank the perp, what we call as a perpetrator. I could th look back and I was grateful because I knew that this person was playing a role for my evolution here. I did it from a place of love, from a higher perspective. Even though I could have been physically killed, I can still look back and be grateful because I know that without that happening, I wouldn't be here where I am today. That actually catalyzed me for a purpose and it's actually empowered me. So it led me on, again, to be my counselor now, a teacher, um, a channel. So all that happened, you know, for me. So that's what happens when we go through things like... Um, when we feel like we're victimized, when there's certain themes or you just, you know, everything happens for us. And this realization, guys, it doesn't happen overnight. Just know that. It's not like, oh, you know, you go through something, oh, you know, it takes practice. You know, I've spent years, you know, healing myself and then seeing a higher perspective, teaching this, embodying this, um, using these principles in my everyday life. So it takes time, guys. And with time, you, you create, basically, when you go through trauma, your brain you know you can when you do like meditations when you do the inner work you actually regrow gray matter in the brain right so you regrow the brain you regrow connections and you create coherence to the brain and heart so you change your biology so you can change your biology so if you change your biology you can transmit uh, any um, fear trauma actually within your cells because your cells carry the energy right so um yeah it's it's a yeah, there's a whole number of things, but basically it's just to know that it is possible to change. So no matter what you're going through, no matter how intense it is, or even if it's something quite minimal and you and you think maybe it's not even enough to even go into it, understand if you don't face the trauma, the limiting beliefs, irrational fears, it stays in your energy field. So as much as you want to ignore it, it's going to come up and it's going to affect your reality, your biology, and it's going to uh create certain manifestations in your reality so it's about retraining yourself to not be afraid of the fear not be afraid of going within because that's where the power is and, and once you can do that you'll see the silver linings and you will become empowered right you can become resilient and it could be a superpower so um yeah so there are no victims in this reality we all are here as go, go, you know god creators so yeah, it's just like their higher self, our higher self, we're all playing this role together, right? So it's, you know, sometimes it's hard when we're in physical reality, we see duality, we're attached to it, we see victimization, we see people controlling us, situations controlling us, but really that's just a paradigm of third dimensional reality. We are one. So it's, yeah, it's just practice, guys. Practice and loving yourself is the main thing. Loving yourself raising your perception of self-love and self-worthiness. That's where the healing starts. That's when you activate the remembrance of your divine self. So it all starts from within. Yes. Summer. Kimberly just gave right, That was a long answer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the subject. And Summer, you're going to jump in. But that yes. is why reality is perfect. Because if Kimberly didn't have that trauma and took dancing lessons and went within, she wouldn't be a psychic and a channeler and where she is today. All right. That's the recap. All right. Summer. <laughs> I think this is like probably one of the hardest things to accept because like nothing is perfect about this. Like everything is like a total mess. It's like a cluster, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like a lot of the situations, the relationships that all of us are in as human beings is nothing like what we would define as perfect if we were asked 
even under like a lie detector to define what it was or if we thought we were perfect or not. And you look at that and you say, how can that be perfect? Like, how can it be perfect if like people in Africa are like starving to death and there's gangs and there's disease and stuff like, like, how can it be perfect? That's not perfect. That's, that's a disaster. Like nothing about that is perfect, but. but so so point... you think that that is real, that they are really starving, that they are really dying and that dying is final. That that is all that of their existence is them starving, and if they don't come out of that starvation, they have no life. Well, if I follow at least you on this side, it's starving. <laughs> like pain is pain, right? Like I don't think anyone would want to experience that. But I think the idea, the idea of finding perfection in what we would just ordinarily view as imperfection is that this is all arranged like this is all this is all part of a story and the idea of finally being complete is it's almost like a backwards journey back into what you are so you go away from yourself by the training of your relationships with your family you are trained to become what society would see you as or expect you to be in that, you separate from your nature, you separate from what is home, what's most natural to you. And the journey really, as far as I see it, that completion is that you find your way back, like kind of like with what all of you guys are saying, like just by love, just by passion, just by enjoyment, whatever feels best to you is what rejoins you back together. The idea of the imperfection though, is that that is part of the story. That's part of the perfection of, of what we are experiencing as our lives. Um, kind of like saying, okay, so there's a style now in clothing, because <laughs> it's like something I'm doing right now, um, where people take on like a vintage style of clothing, or if you were to take maybe like antique furniture or something like that, that's considered to be a perfect style. It's perfect because it includes those like damages, those kinds of injuries, that sort of drama, that sort of idea about things in that creates a style onto itself. So for it to be like, in a sense, one to one mirror, perfect, perfect symmetry is not necessarily what makes sense to us as humans. Like what makes sense to us is, you know, the tale that we're telling ourselves, the the damages, the ups and downs, the drama or whatnot of it, the imperfection of it is literally what creates the, the understanding of the perfection from our point of view. So in that sense, like all of this stuff that seems out of place is exactly where it's supposed to be in order for us to be the people that we are naturally um, and the people that we're becoming, which by the end of that story, when everything is finally integrated and we are whole, we no longer will be here. It will be the completion. It will be the end. And that will be, in a sense, I could, you could say it's perfect, but everything that seems like a mess is all, it's all part of like the perfection that is unbreakable, that exists in all spirits. Um, so I just cut out there. <laughs> So, yeah, it's kind of hard because a lot of the, the situation that we find ourselves in in life, it resembles nothing. Like, I mean, if you were to think about it from a mathematical perspective, like how balanced, how balanced is your life? Like, are you in perfect health? Is your mind completely fit and toned? Are, are you always at exactly the right moment at the right time from your perspective generally? Because if you experience any kind of pain or emotional upset, that expression of what you're experiencing to yourself, you're saying that that's not perfect, but it's all part of that story that cannot not be perfect. Even in the imperfection, there is an utter perfection in all of that. And you can see that written in the basic foundations of what physics is. Like on the, the smallest level and the biggest level, there are spheres. That is like the nature of physical reality in like the most, the most central way. And so no matter how messy things seem, 
there's always perfect geometry in everything. It doesn't matter how lost something might seem, you're unbroken from like the perfection of all that is. And you're just experiencing it in this way, I guess, this unique distinction of what is utterly one thing, like in everybody's experience. It's just like your fingerprint reality in a sense, the experience of knowing what is fundamentally known by all of us in like a, just your own unique way. And so I think that, yeah, you should, you will, not you should, but you will celebrate the things that you suffer. And that is an inevitable consequence of being in an experience of awakening, of ascension. There will be nothing but the end of endings and the infinity that always is to speak in more cryptic but lucid language. <laughs> I love it. Summer, um, your Kundalini awakening. Can you share a little bit who you who the summer was before the awakening, what led to your awakening? Because that awakening changed your inside world, right? That awakening brought you great awareness and understanding. And what happened in your outside world? I noticed something about the very highest and the very lowest experiences that you can have in your life. They bring up the exact same thing inside of you. Mm. they they bring up like your highest in many senses they put you in touch with aspects of yourself that you don't really know and so whenever you're having like the most amazing time in your life it is very very similar to like you having the absolute worst time in your life and you'll notice that a lot of you activates in different ways like but in very similar ways in both those different experiences you really get to know who you are. It's just that a lot of the time, if you're having the best time of your life, it's usually not a permission slip to go in a direction you need to go to learn more about who you are. So the permission slip that a lot of us need is something usually very dark, very negative, so that we will give ourselves what we need to go into areas of ourselves that then open up the world and that was literally what happened in my experience my experience was all about confronting worth about myself it was it was spe specifically because it it revolved around uh like a romantic relationship that i was in that wasn't working and i felt that i was the one that was wrong and it was like it was almost like a symbol like the peak symbol of like the, the entire life that I was living. So when I was having this relationship with her, I felt like I was failing. I felt like I was sliding down like a slippery slope and nothing I could do, no, no amount of energy that I could put into it could get me to that peak until eventually I just flipped it. I just turned it and I got fed up of trying and then I stopped. And then when I just let go of it and I slid into what I thought would be oblivion was was the awakening of my kundalini it was like the moment where i had more energy than i had ever even known could be a possibility that awakened things inside of me including the perspective of like average people that now i can't turn off so there's a lot of understanding about people that now i can see inside of myself mm. that they can't see about themselves and mm -hmm. It expands you to a point where you have a greater perception of like what everyone's living as almost like a drama that they don't see that they're living. Yes. And it it relaxes you uh like a great deal. Like it really becomes informative in like a very simple way, like on an infant level. So you can be like an infant, just living your life day to day, enjoying simple niceties like in a really powerful like very vulnerable open way it becomes like incredibly enjoyable but then anything that is not in alignment with that becomes that much more utterly painful and you start to see the the 
the relationships, the, I don't know how to say this, sort of like the, the patterns, I guess, that people have in all of their relationships with, with all their friends, with like the people who have businesses or government or whatnot, it all becomes clear and coherent. You start to understand the nature of what it actually means to be human from a more simplistic perspective, because it's utterly simple. And you realize that the worth is sort of like built in. As you start to fail into your success, you realize that you were fighting it the whole time, that your worth is like, it's built in. And that when you start to like enjoy yourself, you start to materialize that into your physical expression. And you start to have capabilities and understandings of things that you never thought you could be. You start to discover you were like a secret success the entire time. But not only that, you discover it in such a simple way. You can see it inside each and every single person out there. It becomes effortless. It becomes simplistic. You can just show them like in very simple ways, things they don't even realize about themselves. And it also reveals the nature of the, I guess, polarization that humanity has because most of what looks like success out there is almost like people just beating themselves up as much as they can to try to earn the worth that they have inside of themselves, depleting themselves the whole time doing it. When, when you just bask in who you are, it all just manifests naturally. But that simultaneously dismantles a lot of the systems around you, which is sort of the nature of what the Kundalini experience is. It dismantles everything about what is unnatural about you and it reorganizes it in the most effortless, natural way. So that's that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, th there is just one thing I wanted, because we have um, been talking about this, but we have talked about a lot about our suffering or uh, our experiencing from that point of view. I, I, I just want to say this about that, and that is that suffering is not a condition for awakening or for ascension. That was the way we were seeing, right? Now we are in a new era. There is a lot of there of information that were valid 20, 30, 40 years ago that were absolutely, in that moment, it was absolutely correct to see things as suffering and all, the, all of that, right? The information that we were collecting back then was of that kind. Now we are in a new era. And so we still, this generation, me, us, all here, we come from that. So we have a lot of suffering in our story because that's how we perceive this to have to be. And so we build ourselves in that way. But now the paradigm, the paradigm has changed so that the suffering thing is not a condition. We were seeing that back then. But now the message has changed. The message is you do not need suffering. It's not a condition that you have in order to reach certain things. It's a way. It's a correct way. It's not wrong, but it's not conditioned for anything. Right? Uh, I think that that is important to, 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 to put out there. I was going to say, that reminds me of something I was talking about with Sarah about like exercise is like when you look at like a gym you almost see like people doing these very odd like robot robotic kind of like behaviors and she was reminding me that if you look at the majority of children when they're young all they want to do is exercise like they want to do it all the time that, let's go here let's go here let's go explore this thing oh, i want to go play with this thing they just want to be active and do things and we shut them down we mannerize them. We tell them to fit into like boxes. No, 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 like this, like this. And we beat the natural exercise that they're having out of them until they get further down. And then we have to like artificially orchestrate it into our lives so that the excitement is completely removed. And it's all just about like military style drilling yourself about things. It's all suffering when in fact, Everything is like joy naturally. That's what you want to do. So if you think about those children, just reverse it again. Let them play so much that that action that they want to take on everything becomes integrated as part of their character, part of their personality structure until it naturally hones 
and organizes and becomes like more of a solid human being. However, if that happens in their body, it's going to happen in their mind. It's going to happen in their behaviors. And they're going to be more organic about everything, which is very positive. However, it's going to upset most of the infrastructure that we have as humanity. And that's what you're talking about in that step down process of like people coming from like one side of the migration of consciousness to the other. Like I said, it's sort of, it's sort of like a backward school. We're kind of like unfolding ourselves into our natural selves that we came from, like when we were infants. Yes, and, and it's interesting, right, you, you, that you talk about the new, the younger generation, the, 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 the children, because you, we can see in the younger generation that there is a change. They are in their behavior, in the way they, they grow up and, and all that. It's different from what we experience in back then, right, in, in, in our infancy and, and the way we were with, with our parents, they are not the same way. They experience it in a different way. And also their relationship with work, they're not going to go into what our parents did of, right, 40 years in the same company, uh, working and being very grateful uh, to have a job because, oh, my holy employer is allowing me to exist, right? Uh, they're not seeing things like th uh, that way anymore. It's that way of seeing things, it's over. It's, we're shifting completely in, in a new way of seeing things. And, and uh, as I'm on, <laughs> let me just uh, take a step forward in this discussion in, in, in what I wanted to bring in. I, I already talked about this with, with um, with Isabel, right? Uh, when I'm talking about perfection of the internalized reality versus the externalized reality, I bring that a step forward in uh, the realization of what? The realization that as the reality is created internally, so we, we are uh, interpreting it that way, that allows our reality to be perfect. Let me explain in, in uh, what I mean with that. And I will be used the suffering, right? <laughs> the crisis to, <laughs> to give you a, a very good example uh, of this. Let's start with the oil crisis in the 70s. There was no oil left in the world. They were looking for it and they couldn't find it. And we were in the middle of a crisis where, well, we could not travel anymore. We could not have a central heating. We could, it's, it was over, right? From the perspective of the 70s in the oil crisis, it was over until they started finding new oil in places they had ch ch looked for oil already and suddenly they found it. And suddenly, well, it's not over anymore. <laughs> Our, our civilization can, can, can keep going. Then we had in the 80s and 90s, the crisis of the ozone, um, of the ozone right? Uh, it was over because there was a, a huge, gigantic hole in, 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 in the ozone. And now all the, these, these uh, rays and could come in and uh, kill uh, us with cancer and everything because we were not built to resist that kind of, of stuff coming in. But then suddenly, well, it's over. There is nothing anymore because the ozone is back. But we were in a situation where the science was saying, well, this is a progressive, right? And once it started, you cannot come back. The ozone is over. It's going to disappear from our, our reality. And well, we'll see who's, we probably will have to go live in, 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 uh, uh, under earth or something like that, because it's not possible to stay uh, living here. Now, next thing the crisis that we have right now, and that was right, the, the, the climate change, right? Climate change where we are seeing things, we have a science that is giving us a clam, a defining now a climate change, um, where, well, to me, it doesn't make sense, but okay. Um, 
where we are repeating the pattern of the ozone crisis, right? It's over once it starts, or you cannot go back, right? We are seeing exactly the same thing that, we're, that we were seeing for the ozone crisis. And why, so all of this to say what? When you look to this situation, one after the other, always situation that were meant to stop everything, you see that then there is a shift where things, where we go over it. No oil, plenty of oil. We are 40, 50 years later, we are not even talking about oil not being enough. The ozone, no more ozone now, it's covered. There is no more hole in the ozone, right? So you see, that's where I'm talking about the perfection of reality because you have this situation that we create, that are created, right? That we are experiencing collectively uh, in the collective. And then you see that, in fact, everything is solved. There is another thing uh, Bashar said. Um, it's a story that I heard Bashar uh, telling. Um, JFK assassinated in 63. Bashar said, well, actually he was not assassinated in 63 originally, he died in 84. Uh, <clears throat> All right. So what happened? Well, it happened that in that vision of reality, JFK revealed the existence of the, extra, uh, the uh, ED of uh, extraterrestrial activities on Earth and our um, already exchanging with them, which created uh, in, the, in the 60s, it was too early. So it created consequences that were not manageable in that reality, right? In our reality, people were absolutely not ready to such a revelation. So what happened is that we corrected. So the reality was corrected and we had the assassination of JFK. Um, so there are so many examples of these things happening where reality is in a certain way and that it is corrected, but that's what I call the perfection of our reality because it's internal and that's the internalization of reality that allows these things to happen. Now, let's see the opposite. Let's see a external physical reality real where everything is, is external. So you are not creating your reality, it exists outside of you. Well, we fucked. We, we won't be here right now. We will already be dead, all of us. We won't have survived the oil crisis. And if we had, well, we wouldn't have survived the ozone crisis because, well, who cannot die of cancer in that reality? We will already be dying of that. And, so on and so on. So many things like that. So you see, that's what I call the perfection of reality. And I'm talking that in a global scale. And now we go global and then we go local, <laughs> we go personal. That's the same with our own experience and our own reality. We have stuff going on, sometimes very fucked up and then there is a solution or, right, there is always something like that so that our own reality becomes perfect. We have our experiences and then sometimes you have people say, I will never survive that. And guess what? They survive. Always. Yes, there is a version that dies. Yes, but that version of you that dies is not all of you. It's one out of many. So that's that's the thing to see. You have experiences and then you keep going. It's interesting right? what you're talking about. Um, I, I know that story from Bashar. That is actually one of the things I was, I was thinking about with the whole disclosure movement. But to say, to comment on what you just said, in a certain sense, I kind of think we are already dead, that a lot of the, the structure of like what we have that's maintaining our lives, that's giving us an opportunity to change and to grow, is what comes from 
outside of it, from like the agreements to participate, from how we build our lives and how the guides help us maintain that structure so that in the inside, we can be kind of like falling apart multiple times, but the structure is like strong enough to actually bring us to the point where we can choose like, like more positive choices from negative choices. And that's, that's like, that's part of the reason why we can't have disclosure in the way that, that people want it, because the way people want it would be in a destructive way. And there needs to, because having disclosure is like almost like the same thing as entering a higher level of consciousness right now. And that would be too fast and too abrupt. So what seems, again, to cue on the theme that we have, what seems like imperfect, what seems like a struggle is actually protecting us. It's actually maintaining our ability to, to have longevity, like in our stories, to have like something more positive long-term and to develop in a more natural, positive way, because we're, we're coming from a lot of darkness, a lot of like sleep. Um, so, but you, it, it's interesting, right? Disclosure, but disclosure of what? Because if I need disclosure is that I have to admit that, that there is something that is hidden. But if I admit that there is something that is hidden, I'm admitting that I am powerless, that I am not creating my reality and that I am hiding unknowingly from me these things. But as you say, is is the when 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 you look into it is that the perfection is that i'm creating my reality so i'm creating what i need in the moment do i need disclosure in this moment no i don't why should i have this disclosure when i don't need it do i need to know all of that right now will it change my life if i knew all of that right now i i, I talk generally no Right. So in the moment where that is, that happens, it, it happens because it happens exactly when it has, right? It's, it's, it's uh, I, I, um, the way I see disclosure, right? It's that it's like suppression of technology. Who's suppressing what? Really? From my reality? Who is in charge of my reality? I am. So you're not fucking around with me and you are not suppressing technology from my reality, I can assure you. And that's the same for every single living being right here, right now. No one suppresses anything because you don't need it. You what? do not need it. I would. Or it will be there. I would somewhat disagree with this in a, in a way, just because it, it is actually us that's suppressing that. And that reflection of like the external is actually what's going on inside of us. That's why there is a cover up at all. It's not because like that is literally what we're doing to ourselves. We are literally like covering up things from ourselves and we don't realize it. That's the whole process of waking up. We're learning to like, we're learning to unfold those realities within and finally see firsthand, oh my God, like I'm, like I'm creating this. Like when you're actually looking at it, that is usually when you have control over it and you, you can do that stuff to yourself. So yeah, they are, they are suppressing technology, but really it's because we're all suppressing that level of consciousness that allows those things to grow naturally from ourselves. So we are like, we are creating that. And for that to come out, just like what Bashar was trying to say, it's connected to a lot of things that the infrastructure that we have in our world depends upon. So if that stuff comes out, it would have a collapsing effect on the economy, on like the, the just like the, the infrastructure that we depend upon to like get food, communication, like all this, all this stuff would just shut down and we have to like step that down bit by bit. So the thing that's coming out right now about like, oh, we saw lights, we don't know what they are, like that's the level we can handle it on right now. We need to like introduce the conversation, but that's like the level we can handle it. And that's being done consciously by the people who are actually getting psychologically tricked to do that in many senses by the ETs themselves who are helping that from like a higher level of consciousness because they understand us better than we understand ourselves.
But we are somehow, uh, I, I'm not somehow, yeah, somehow saying the same thing, but in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and let yeah. me chime in. And let me chime in here too, because I've chatted a lot of information about what's going on. So the perfection of the universe. Everything that is happening now, right? So with the pandemic, with the bushfires, with the election, with everything that is catalyzing all these people around the world, it's all for disclosure, actually. It's all leading us. It's, it's collective soul contract. So what's happening? The whole disclosure thing. Yes, we're not collectively ready for it because it's, there was too much fear in the collective. So if the collective was to know that we were not alone in the universe, most people will react in fear. So this is why there's all these events that's happening at the moment because it's actually allowing us to address our inner shadows. It's allowing us to ask those existential questions, right? So that's why there's so many of us are being triggered at the moment with all these different events right because when it's allowing us to see high perspectives it's allowing us to see love it's allowing us to reconnect say with our families or to see what's you know okay before we, all this stuff happened people were like work 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 now people are like now seeing what's what truly matters for them in their reality they're we have re-evaluating their lives what's important whether it's family or their passions, you know, so it's actually creating change. So it's allowing people to, opportunity to face the fear. Yes, a lot of people are in fear and it has caused division, but it's part of their awakening journey. They need to go through this to be triggered to then, you know, along their journey, they will need to choose love because the, the fear will be too great. And there is no wrong when there's no right. So you can choose fear, you can choose love. It's up to you, it's your journey. We co-create, you know. We're God creators, but sooner or later, there's going to be a time where they'll have to surrender and then let go, right? And, and because of all the conditions happening in the moment, there are things that are out of our control, right? So people have to kind of surrender to it. So it's, it is triggering a lot of people, but it's also giving them opportunity to go within, to, to practice acceptance, to practice letting go of control. And what's happening on a collective level now is that we, the reason why we're all going through this, we might think, why are we going through this? Why did we create all these perceived suffering? We as a collective wanted it because we're so highly advanced people. And we might go, why would we want this? Why would we want suffering? But we don't choose this from a physical perception. And what's happening is that now the collective is moved now into a majority of love. And when there is a majority of love in the frequency, it op it's opening a portal to allow basically first contact to occur, right? So when we say first contact, yes, there's already been contact. We know that this is on a collective level. On So basically, they're able to come forth in a way that we can witness that they're here. No, so it's not just like psychically knowing they're here or only a select few know that they're here this is going to be something that the collective without a doubt know that we're not alone in the universe so for them to come here i guess come here they're already here right but to be shown that they're here they we need to be at a high vibration collectively for them to kind of be in us uh we would say in a way lower their vibration in a way so that we can actually see them so we can actually know them that they're real so it's kind of like we we have to raise our frequency as a collective for this to happen that's what's happening these are collective uh, soul contracts otherwise known as free birth intentions so there's individual stuff going on perception of individual soul contracts like for me with what i went through there were my soul contracts i needed to go through these for my journey not everyone has to go through suffering not everyone has to go through what i went through but it's also a collective thing so when you see events happening on a collective level this is all for us so the perfection of that is is that it's actually and this is something that happens from for all timelines there are certain events that moves the collective into oneness evolution so what's going on right now even though on a superficial level, it might seem like it's creating division. It's actually allowing people to go through purges. So it's a, the inner shadows are forced to come to the surface to heal, to transmute. It's actually moving the collective to higher uh, dimensions of oneness remembrance. And once that happens, that's when that first contact disclosure that we've been talking about can occur. Because we'll be at that collective frequency when we're ready for it because 
there'll be not as many people in fear when it occurs. So it's kind of everything is preparing us and so all this, the disclosure, all these kind of grand global events, let's just say. It's it's basically these events all happen in, in all the timelines of humanity and civilization. So it's kind of, it's a, it's a way of moving a collective, a, a duality-based collective into remembering their divine oneness self. So in that, you can see the perfection of it. It's like we needed something so catalyzing, so large scale to, to move us, to catalyze, but also by that moment, it empowers us. And, and then even though on the surface level, we see division, it's only because we don't see, we haven't finished moving through it yet, obviously. And it's, um, yeah, it's giving us an opportunity to go within. So we are becoming more one because of everything that's happening and yeah we're starting to move more of our love state because of what's happening so that's where the perfection is so if you get yes. into the little you know the third dimensional details about why it's suffering why would i choose this and all of that but there's of the soul contracts with that so when people have um you know for instance severe illness or when people transition because of an event um that's also part of their soul contract so we actually choose when we're going to die from a non-physical perspective so even in that there's no victimization so i mean that's another subject for another day right another episode <laughs> but everything that's occurring is could be interesting so, yes yeah. <laughs> so well, again uh, the disclosure everything is perfect and everything what's happening now is just it's for our evolution yes and 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 right it's it's just uh, the way we relate to that and 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 one thing that is interesting in that is that we have the perception because those that are in a certain way are those that are talking the louder right we are hearing a lot of noise from and we think that that is the majority it's not the majority it's simply those that are making the most noise mm -hmm. the collective is shifting so the, there is much more of that even if it's silent, in silence, it's happening. Right, Isabel? I agree, I agree. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I got out on you. Um, I, so I just want to like bring us back to why everything is perfect. So our perceptions we may view it as imperfect. I also heard that it was, um, I think you guys were kind of saying that it's the design of the system, the, the pain and suffering, or it's our perception of the pain and suffering. We can expand and joy. Uh, the drama is necessary in the imperfection of the perfection. Um, Kimberly was definitely talking about how her trauma led her and she could see the higher perspective. And so we gave you a lot of different angles on why it's perfect, why your experience is perfect as is. I also talked about frequency and vibration because it's we're creating our reality through our frequency and vibration and our beliefs. We talked a little bit about adopting beliefs. You know, I say, be curious. Maybe you have the perspective of summer. Maybe you can totally relate to Kimberly or Max. It doesn't matter. But my challenge, can you see the perfection of your experience? I dare you, give it a whirl. See if you resist it. <laughs> See if you want to say, no, it's not perfect. <laughs> I'm saying that it's not perfect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think the, the way I explain it to myself is it's not perfect, but this is exactly like how it's supposed to be for right now. It's like, even though it seems like a total mistake, like it's not like this is like, it's not a mistake. Like you're exactly where you're supposed to be. It's supposed to be unfinished and unmystical or seeming not like it's fate, even though it all is. Like you can't get away from it because like fate is the nature of how things work. So this is not an accident. No matter what it might seem like, you're exactly 
exactly where you need to be perfectly. Aha! <laughs> Isn't isn't it also, uh, I don't know if it's Roxy or Bashar already said this, I don't know who said what, but it doesn't matter. But, uh, right, the, the thing of saying we have the, the five laws that have been given to us, everything else is a belief system. So even what we are saying right now, it's our own perspective on reality, which doesn't have to be everyone else's because everyone has its own, right? And and I, I think that this is really important to that to to express always, to give really the realization of everyone that whatever you believe, whatever it is, and even for those that have absolutely strange beliefs, <laughs> but I, I was I was watching some um, documentaries about the past, right? The the, the Celtic and, and, and these things uh, with the commentary from people from this era, from, from this now, from uh, right? Wh where you hear these people talking about the belief system that they had back then, minimizing or, or, or smashing those belief systems, saying, well, our belief system right now is better than the belief system back then, because now we are, we are evolved, intelligent, better, and all of that. And was there, how do you know, right? It, it was another year, another belief system. It was valid as your belief system right now, right? So we, we, we have always to remind ourselves it's not wrong for how much others could see whatever wrong in us, we are not. We're perfect. No, perfect. so um, the, <laughs> team, the team is coming in and <laughs> just would like me to make this point. Um, when we were incarnated anywhere in the universe or even non-physical entities, what they would like this idea to settle within us is that it's all about experiences and expansion. And so when you're physically incarnated, so let's just take the example of Max of the Celtics back then, and the, the commentary saying their beliefs were uh, limited, uh, their perspective, okay? And Max was like, well, how do you even know that? everyone's journey and timeline and dimension well there really is no time but let's just say dimension everyone's experience in their dimension is for a greater understanding for that in that spark of source that greater understanding that's part of something greater and bigger and the bigger and the bigger and it goes to oneness so everyone's unique perspective and experience is expanding all that is. And Kimberly channels this all the time. But they would like me to bring forth this message so that you can see how perfect it is, how the design of the game, of the expansion, of the uniqueness, the experience, the existence of all that is, that we are all that is, how beautiful and perfect it is. And that is what they wanted me to bring forth. <laughs> they just, you know what, Summer, you know what they're saying? They're just saying, uh, and I have the same viewpoint, just so, so you know, I, um, I always say the imperfections and the perfection, and I get uh, I hear them saying, it's your perception that it's imperfect. It's perfect. <laughs> and, I was, and I'm like, I know, okay. <laughs> but can you ask them, can you ask them why you have that perspective or why we have oh, that? We came, it's really, um, so one of the things that I love to study is, um, not that I, my sister used to create software games, but you really create a, a paradigm, like a, a structure in a world. And so we came here uh, 
as an entity to believe the imperfection is not not being perfect, not being enough, not being worthy. We really came here to experience it. And it's so deep. <laughs> and, and you know what? The, and when we say something is not perfect or is perfect, that's because we're comparing it to something. What are we yes. comparing it to? Yes, and this that's world. Duality. If we yes, measure, yes, that's yes. duality. There, you know Sorry. what they say? Uh, Kimberly, they always say it's so human for us to compare. It's so human. Mm -hmm. And when I hear them uh, uh, talk to me uh, as a human, like, oh, Isabel, that's just so human, or that is a human experience, embrace it. I'm like, wait a second, you said this is human? That implies somewhere else in this uh, universe, a multiverse, there's a place where you don't compare. And then I'm like, oh, of course, of course it exists because all possibilities must exist. So there is a dimension where entities don't compare themselves to each other because that must exist. So yes, it's very human for us to see the imperfections. <laughs> they're saying, <laughs> they're saying that's like most of the dimensions <laughs> where they don't compare each other. <laughs> that was, yes. <laughs> you you were trying to make it better for us. <laughs> this is some it's like all of them. <laughs> out there there's some kind of like place where things are more in balance and harmony with each other maybe far far no no no. that's like this this is the place that's like the odd one out most of the universe is operating but, like let's just put yes. it like this physics itself only operates like that this is the one place where we've managed to be creative so to speak but it and it, it's even not the dimension that is like this it's our system of humans that works yeah. this way right it's like the forgetting what you are it's us we are the human experiences that doesn't mean in in, in other third dimensional places that they have the same system that's, 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 so we come here with that idea forget yeah yes yeah. no. they're, they're saying this is the only place where we've managed to make physics look like an opinion. It's not like it's not like that, right? Yeah. And that's why we are all masters because this yeah. reality, in this reality, we go in within such a level of spiritual measure of who you know who we are. That's why everybody that is on this earth now are advanced master teachers. So even those that you might think are unawakened or in fear or however you like to perceive them they are all master teachers we are all master teachers we're all playing a role for each other some are awakening to remembrance and some are not doesn't mean they're not highly advanced they're just playing a role of the ones that are perceived to be unawakened but they're still highly advanced beings so that just shows you the level of difficulty it's like a master game right we've reached a master yes. level we wanted this level of difficulty because that's how advanced we are. So that in, in that, that's where you can see the perfection. The fact that we created such a reality where it seems so separate and so much duality and we can perceive suffering and, and oh my goodness. And that's because we're such masters at this. We wanted to be, we wanted to be tricked in, well, not say tricked, but we wanted yeah. to, we came here knowing it's going to be like this because we are so highly advanced. But coming into this reality, we have all the tools within us to manage everything that we face because we are the master teachers, but we can't access that if you do not think you're enough, if you don't think you're loved. So if you raise your perception of self, you then can activate those technologies as tools within you. So it's about actively seeing or reality the eyes of source, the eyes of oneness. And it takes practice, but you can get there, you know, and we're part of this unit. Yes, we're the transition. And it's normal to have glimpses of our oneness, how powerful we are. And then whoop, something happens, you get triggered, go right back into duality. That's okay. We're, we're, we're meant to be going through this transitional period. And only the most advanced beings can actually be here in this transition. So the fact you're here, living and breathing, just shows how powerful you are. Whether you consciously or, or you feel like you're highly awakened, it doesn't matter. The fact you're here 
shows how powerful you are. And it's just a journey home to remember who you are that you'll love. So it's just one step at a time, guys. One step at a time. One dimension at a time. <laughs> As I say. Hey, do we have any questions out there um, that you would like to ask this panel around perfection? Not for uh, yet, but let's give them just the time to receive this because we are in advance. We are yeah. <laughs> in the uh, future moment. Yeah. So they have, yeah, they, they're coming. Yeah. They're getting your message now. <laughs> okay. That's good. You know, it's so funny. Um, the team on the other side, they, they were really excited about our conversation <laughs> right then and there. They were like jumping in. <laughs> They're like, yes, you guys are so advanced. <laughs> yeah, but right, isn't it also part of the game to see ourselves as less than and then realize, well, we are not less than, but it's wow. such a work every day to realize that we are not less. Yeah. You know, um, recently, uh, it, um, I'm just going to share this really quick with um, you guys. I had an earth review and I saw, I had my own personal life review and then I had an earth review during the lion's gate and they were just explaining to me that all the wars, the loss of a child, food, money, power, um, all my, as Isabel's pain, pain, my perception of pain and suffering was a necessary process for our species development and I was just like it made perfect sense so one of the things that they showed me was um, a butterfly coming out of the cocoon if I help that butterfly break out of the cocoon that butterfly wouldn't fly because it's that struggle of breaking free of the cocoon that allows those wings to toughen and dry so the butterfly could fly. And then little chicks, they showed me little chicks and they said, notice the hen doesn't break the egg for the little chick. It's that little chick struggling to break through the egg that allows it to live. And so it was our part of our evolution and our species development as humans and we're pretty amazing, I have to say, guys, as humans to develop so we could go into the darkness and the experience. It's not dark, but I'm just going to call it dark so you, we can have the same language. But to go into the denser frequencies to understand the light. And so it was really necessary for us to understand it in order to, to separate like the divine feminine and masculine and to have that separation so we can bring it into oneness. And it's, it would be, and, I, and, and here's my Isabel analogy. When the babies are growing in mommies, when they grow very quickly, humans grow like nine weeks, puppies, 12 weeks, whales, three months, uh, three years. When a human baby is growing the bones very quickly, it's painful. It's actually painful for that little baby. But I would never say, oh, that's really painful for the baby. Let's take out her bones. Let's, let's not have her grow bones because it's painful, right? And that sounds absurd, right? It sounds absolutely ridiculous that I would take away the pain of growing bone for the baby, but the baby is designed to grow very quickly. That human baby is designed that way and it's okay. So if you can see our struggle or pain and suffering as necessary for our development and growth, I hope that helps. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, it's just, we are, we are such highly advanced beings, like if you can see the beauty, 
Like we are all unique frequencies of source, right? We're one, but we're also unique frequency. And there's just, it's just, if you can practice seeing the beauty in everything, and it takes time to see the beauty in everything, but most of the time we don't see beauty within ourselves. So because we don't see beauty and perfection within ourselves, that vibration creates manifestations and an outer reality that things are not perfect, right? And because we like to compare, we've been conditioned that success create is a, uh, is, comes with measures, right? So measures of what is perfection, what is successful, but, you know, everyone's having a unique journey. You cannot compare your journey with everybody else. You might say this person is having a, a perfect experience, a perfect reality, but why are you comparing your journey with theirs? You don't know their soul contract. You don't know why they came here. So you cannot compare. So in comparison, you might think, okay, I'm not perfect. My journey is not perfect because that person, the ideal is the, the benchmark to reach, right? But um, understand that we're all exploring this uniquely because we came here for specific, you know, soul contracts, reasons why we're here, soul missions. But we're also doing this collectively as well. So this is a journey of self-love, guys. Self-love and surrender. And um, yeah, we're exploring that. Now the collect is more in love. And, you know, we're going to start to see even greater shifts reflective of love as we, as we, you know, allow, right, the dimensions of self that we have not loved, which we call shadow selves or the darkness, to the aspects of us, dimensions of us, which we have not loved, that we have not accepted. We need to address them, love them, accept them, and then we transmute them, unite them into oneness remembrance. And then as we, as a collective do that, that's when we're going to remember more of our oneness day. It's just, one step at a time, guys. There's no race here. There's no end point to reach. The magic is in the journey. So if you can see the beauty in your journey, that's that's where it is. That's where you activate. And also the, your biology. By us doing all this work, yes, it creates ripple effects. It's creating our bio, affecting our biology. It's activating our divine blueprint. That's why there's so many of us um, activating more of our psychic and intuitive abilities. So our DNA is shifting because of the collective shift. It's creating actual biological effect in our body and consciousness, not just us, not just our collective, but all that is and all collectives around the universe and beyond. So what's happening here on earth in our time, right? Perception of time is creating so much expansion for all that is. That's how advanced we are. And I mean, we cannot fully comprehend it because of our human perception, but it's just, ah, oh, if, if you can only see how perfect you are, how beautiful you are, guys, you are, you are love in every single way. You, you are unconditional love. That's who we are. That's, that's who all of us are, is love. And we are keeping this as our words of the end, <laughs> uh, the beautiful words of love. Um, so thank you to everyone for joining us. Uh, thank you to all of you, uh, Isabel, Kimberly, and Summer for uh, this amazing conversation tonight. And uh, well, thank you for everyone. In any moment you will watch this, it's always now. So you were already with us right now, co-creating. Doesn't matter the time, it was ready now. So thank you everyone and well we uh, the next one the next one in two weeks will be hosted by Nikki, Nikki. Yes. yes right okay yes. so we will see you everyone for the next roundtable hosted by Nikki bye bye <laughs>